we are going to record a little bit about creating a circle in Aspire. And we're going to do a little farther depending on how much time we get, but let's start with a circle. So first things, when you first open up Aspire, it looks like this. And we can either create a new file or open an existing one. I'm going to create a new file. The first thing that pops up is our job setup. So this is like our work area to, to work in. This top box is the job size. I'm going to set that to 16 inches by 16 inches. Then we have to figure out the material thickness. We're using approximately 3 quarters of an inch thick material. We're going to be cutting it out of plywood. So 3 quarters of an inch. The zero wood, it's going to zero off of the top of the wood or the material or the bottom of the material. Most everything we're going to do is going to be the top. If we go the bottom, it's going to think that zero's down here. Thus, it may not do so well on our cutting or make it easier to zero. So, our XY datum position, if you look at the screen, it looks like it's in the middle, these little crosshairs. I just changed it to the lower left, but this is where zero, zero, zero would be. Let's go to the middle. There we go. Now we can change it to inches or millimeters. I'm leaving it as inches. Down here you can change what the resolution ends up being. And this is more for the modeling. If I click on 3D view, you see the material. I can also change the different types of wood. So whatever we pick, it doesn't really matter. We'll go to something a little dark. That cherry, or let's go dark wood. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to say OK. We've set up our work area. Now if we ever want to come back and change it, we come up here beneath new and click on set job dimension. Alright, so the next thing we're going to create a circle and there's all these little drawing commands. I can click on circle and now it says where do you want your center point to be? Well that's the coordinate 0, 0. That's where we want it but I'm going to draw it somewhere else just to show that we can move it. Um, we can set up radius or diameter. I know I need an 11 and a half inch diameter circle, so I'm going to select diameter, 11 and a half, and just click out here somewhere. So there's our circle. Now one thing to consider, if you hit apply and create a couple of times, because you're like, well, am I done? I'm going to close this, and you click on your circle, you've actually drawn a whole bunch of circles on top of each other. So I'm going to delete a few of those. You see it's pink and dark, pink and black. Once I click on it, it's just pink and white. That is one item on top. Only one item. So if I click it once, it selects. Click it twice, you can move it. I want this centered. So I could click on it, grab the middle, and drag it down. Well, attempt to drag it to the middle. Or we can click on the circle. And then go over here where it is the aligning section. The very top part aligns to the material, which is what we want or you could actually align to a box if you have a box that you want to align this inside of. So I'll click align to the center. It's all on the center now. Okay. Now we're ready to do a toolpath. So if I click on your circle, come up here to toolpaths, oops, and if you want you can pin it up so it stays on the screen and doesn't disappear. Now up here we're going to set or we're going to cut it out and there's different types of toolpaths. The main two we're going to or the only one we're going to talk about on this is a profile which cuts around it. The next one is a pocket. It cuts like an area out. So let's go profile. Sometimes called a contour in other programs. Cut depth. The top of the material is at zero and we want it to cut down. We said three quarters of an inch, 0.75. We want it to cut a little deeper than that. So I'm going to put 0.7 seven just so it cuts deeper make sure to look at your material thickness if you are using thinner material you shouldn't be cutting as deep because this cuts through next we're going to select the tool and we're using a quarter inch end mill and there's of course a bunch of different types quarter inch end mill diameter of a quarter inch the cut depths this is how much it cuts every time it moves around it's at an eighth inch Kind of by rule of thumb, you want to cut half the diameter of the tool deep. We're kind of running this fast in some soft material, so we're actually going to match it. So we're going to go to a quarter of an inch. Um, another thing is 
we are going to um, look at our feed rate. My feed rate right now is 100 inches per minute. That's a little fast. So I'm going to change it to 30 inches a minute, which is a more reasonable speed. And if you think about that, the travel time, if we've got a, a 10 inch square, it's going to take, all right, so we're looking at the feed rate of 30 inches per minute. So if we had a four by 40, four, 10 inch by 10 inch square, it would take 10, 10, 10, 10. It would take a little bit over a minute to make one pass. So it would take what, four, maybe five minutes if we did three passes deep. Water's not but we're setting it at 30 inches a minute, which is a reasonable speed. We're cutting a quarter inch deep. I'll say apply and OK. Every once in a while, this might pop up with an error, and the computer may not give you rights to save the toolpath to the system. But just say OK, it'll save it for this session. So we have passes. We Down here we have the inside or outside of the shape we're cutting. We're doing the outside. We can do a climb or a conventional, and we'll have that explanation in another video, but if you use a regular router, you know, climb tries to pull itself along, where conventional cuts away from it. And then we want to add tabs. Our tabs we want to be, we're going to pick 0.65 inches long, and 0.185 thick, just so we have enough thickness to hang on to that board. I could say we can make them 3D so they ramp up and ramp down. If I edit tabs, now I can say constant number, maybe I want four. Add tabs. It just automatically throws them in, but if I want them in my own spot, I can drag them, or I can click on them and delete them and just add new ones where I want to find them. On a circle, it makes sense to be over here out in the middle where there's some meat in the wood to hang on to. Close. And now down here, I can put a name on here. Like maybe I want this to be, I'm going to call it Ben Circle. So it has a description. Calculate the toolpath. Uh-oh, it's giving us a warning. It's going to cut through the material, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to say OK. And you can see the toolpath. It's outside of our selected line. We can close our toolpath now and then go over here to Preview. You can see it. Actually, I moved that earlier to get to the angle, but I can come up here and say isometric, top, front, whatever you want. I can reset preview and preview all toolpaths. And the toolpaths are down here. I can turn them on and off visually by checking that little box. I can twist this around or pan it if I hold the middle mouse button down. When I move it like this, it is the left mouse click. OK, my tabs are there. We're good. So now I say close, and I can save the toolpath. And output all visible toolpaths. The visible toolpath, if you have multiple, you can select it. Down here, you select the type of machine. Um, we have a couple of machines. We have a Techno Weisel. Arc Inch is the one you want, Techno Weisel Arc Inch, or a ShopBot Arc Inch. The special part with the arc, if we put arc in there, this thing is an arc. If we changed it to just inches, it would, rather than just make a circle command, it would every little bit go er, 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 and just tons of tiny little lines rather than just an arc. Makes your code a lot longer. So you've got your machine selected, and you can save both of them. You know, just save once, go back, change it, and save again. Shopbot, arc inch, save toolpath, save it where you want to and I'm just going to dump it on the desktop, bend circle. You'll want to select your jump drive in the folder that you want. Save that. Toolpath is written. Now you just save the toolpath over here. You need to save your drawing by coming over to the left side and hitting save. And I can call this one bend circle. And it's going to save it with a .crv 3D, carve 3D file. And the shopbot saves it in an SBP file. And a Techno saves it with an NCD file, if I can find it. Techno ISIL ARC ATC. ATC stands for Automatic Tool Changer. We don't have one, but it's not going to affect our, our programming. So, All right, I will close that. Everything's saved.